James Swanick here, and we are on another Swanick Live. And today we're talking about how to break free from other people's expectations so you can reach your full potential. And today on the show, we've got Sheldon Bailey, and Sheldon has acted on Nickelodeon's sitcom Game Shakers. Uh, he's a seasoned actor. He's done more than 75 TV shows, 100 commercials. He also makes music. He's got two albums, Golden Eagle and Crazy Joey, a book of poetry. He produces music and film. And he's a former college and pro basketball player. And I um, we will get into this in a little bit, but I, as I understand it, his uh, athleticism was cut short by a couple of injuries. So we'll talk about that. And uh, Sheldon is also a very passionate Swannies wearer. He's been rocking his Swannies blue light blocking glasses. He's wearing them now. Looking very cool and hip. We should do a competition like who wore them better, you or me. I can see that you've got you've got me beat on this one, <laughs> Sheldon. Great to have you here on the show. How are you? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm I'm doing very well, and I'm happy to be here. I really yeah. love the brand and everything that you all represent. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so tell us, you were an aspiring uh, athlete, and then it was cut short by injury. Am I right? Tell us about that. Uh Cut, it wasn't necessarily cut short, but it made it, it kind of created a detour. Um, so I was a star basketball player in high school, and I was doing very well uh, on my way to you know, you know, success in that sport. And I wound up tearing my ACL when I was 16. Uh, but not just my, I tore my ACL, my MCL, and my meniscus. So I almost had a complete tear of the left knee at age 16. Uh, which created, I had to have surgically reconstructed. And uh, doctors and, you know, suggested that I didn't play basketball anymore. And, you know, at 16, I had a decision if I was going to continue or, or not, because it was a very serious injury. Um, but I decided to rehabilitate myself um, and get back out on the court. And within, I don't know, eight months time, uh, I was able to get back and earn myself a, uh, Division one college scholarship. Nice. So what was the lesson that you learned out of that whole process? Uh, well, one of the things, basketball was so prominent in my life. It was like the thing, the one thing, and I just knew I had it made. Um, and so, you know, life threw me a big curveball. And I had to, you know, make some decisions on what I really valued and cared about. Uh, I was a solid student, but I can't necessarily say that um, I really had a focus on what my education was about or what else that I loved. Um, I did love acting. I had been in acting classes for a while, but so that kind of got me, that put acting more like more as at the forefront um, as a passion of mine because I knew I could do it and be healthy because that was one of the things that I did while rehabilitating and then also you know just the things where was I going what was I doing you know hanging out with friends you know I looked at that a, di a different way as well like I really became very focused on getting getting my getting my goals achieved mm. outside of basketball were there were there expectations on you from friends or family at that point, or did that come later? So, yeah. I, well, I was always a tall individual. So even before I was good at basketball, people wanted me to play basketball because um, I was extremely tall. I mean, by the age of 12, I think I was about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, I could dunk the basketball any kind of way you wanted. So it became the thing. And also, to be real, culturally, um, I also think that's a thing. As a tall african-american male um you're definitely pushed towards you know success in you know in pro sports so i always had that social pressure peer pressure family pressure to a certain extent um to achieve in basketball did you take on that pre i mean how did you how did that pressure resonate with you did you feel it and was it like a a draining pressure or was it a motivating or an energizing well, pressure like at the time how did it feel well at first when i wasn't good at the sport it was draining um but 
then it became motivating when I, my parents were divorced. And so whenever I um, got to move with my father, um, we spent a lot of time working on my game. And then I think that father-son time and my actual development became motivating and made me want to be that star um, that I felt like I could be or that other people saw in me. Now, the thing came later that I had to achieve certain things. All right? I, I went to college and played basketball. I played basketball as a pro. But even now, at the age of 37, with two reconstructed knees, people still want me to be a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say what are some of the things they say uh who do you play for um why don't you why don't you try to be in the nba it's a, a lot of the times it's the guy at the checkout at the grocery store the bag the person is bagging my groceries a lot it was like man you never thought about playing for the lakers never crossed my mind buddy never thought about it <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, it- this lady, I was in the grocery store and this older lady was like, baby, I hope you're using that height for something. I hope you're just not tall for nothing. Like, wow. Like, if I wasn't, like, that would be like all these constant shots in my ego every single day. So I really feel for like tall guys that aren't good or didn't even achieve, you know, certain success in the sport. Because there is a lot of social pressure um, be a tall guy and think being a tall black male uh, to play ball. Yeah, there's a lot of stereotypes going on there, a lot of expectations and people, a lot of judgments that are being made very, very quickly. And I know that um, I must put my hand up and say I have been guilty. I was guilty in the past of seeing very overweight people and you know people who were obese and unhealthy and i and i was very very quick to judge at a time of my life where i would look at them and go oh man why can't you just like eat better or exercise and so i would i would i would look at them through that lens and it was only later on with some self development work that i realized man that's just like the most judgmental selfish way to look at someone because I got no idea who they are, what their background is, what their story is, what's going on. I got, I got no clue. And who the hell am I to judge anyone just for, for, you know, their choices or their, how they live their life. It's like, who, who am I? And so yeah. that was a big wake up call to me. And it's funny because as you're sharing that now, I can, I can, I can see how that, that, must affect you and other people when people that you don't know are just kind of making these snapshot judgments about you without even having a conversation with you, quite frankly. This is true. And the thing is, I was able to achieve a lot in basketball. I didn't make it to the NBA, but I got a free education. I did make some money. I've traveled the world. Um, It is one of the main things that helped me have success in the entertainment industry. Um, but I don't have time to go down this whole list of the people, everybody who, you know, talks to me or wants to, you know, me to be a basketball player because I've been quite accomplished in, you know, a wide range of areas in my life. And for me, that, you know, I, that confidence, I, I rest with that. Um, but for some people, honestly, like, it's, they, they, they don't want to let it go. Like, I mean, it, it, it sometimes it carries on. I just need to exit. <laughs> yeah. We're talking to Sheldon Bailey, who is an actor, a writer, a rapper, an athlete, a father. Uh, you can check him out on Instagram. Uh, his handle is Big Shell Bailey. Big Shell Bailey. You can check him out there. Um, what's uh, I know that you've worked a lot with with youth um, uh, previously, and you've helped. Uh, you're a youth advocate, and you've worked with several ch- charities that benefit young people. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about how that came came to be? Yeah, um, I feel like I came from a charitable family. Um, my parents were the pillars of their families, uh, large uh, families of siblings, and um, they were always giving. And then my grandmother, who also raised me for part of my life, uh, was uh, a Baptist minister and just very charitable throughout my whole childhood. I remember going to, you know, nursing homes as a kid. I remember her giving my clothes to my less fortunate friends. So uh, it was something that was instilled in me. And I always felt it was important to 
keep that. And I always knew how it made me feel. And I always liked how it made other people feel. So I, I, I wanted to keep that involved in my life. And so whenever I've had the opportunities, um, I've jumped on them and I've created some opportunities to help as well. Mm. I've done that myself a couple of years ago. I, I set myself a goal of, of uh, helping 12 charities in 12 weeks. It was one a week. Um, it was a lot more challenging than I thought it would be, to be honest. It's a, that's actually a lot to identify, find, and then go and actually help. But, but I did it, man, that opened me up so much. It was really, they've done a lot of studies um, in neuroscience that show that the, one of the quickest ways to get people out of depression or sadness is to have them be of service to, to other people. Um, have you found that in your own life that when you've been of service that that's changed your own mood almost? It sounds kind of selfish to say that, right? Like, oh, I'm helping people and I get to feel good. It's, it's like it's not I, truly I, a selfless act. I think it's fine, though. I mean, I, I, that, for sure. Um, it's okay. I mean, I'm not going into it to make myself feel better, but it is, um, you know, reciprocal product of of giving. Um, it's one of those things. Whenever you do give, that you under I believe that the law of nature and the law of the universe is that um, it's coming back to you one way or another. And but then that all can't be quantified. So you just go with the best intentions in heart. And it will all, it, it all works out. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, you are rocking your swannies at the moment. Tell us a little bit about how, uh, how they've be, been for you, whether how you experience them, when you use them, what people say when you're wearing them. Uh, I use them quite frequently. Um, I like to wear them. I mean, at all the time I wear them at night, I wear them during the daytime uh, they've been a good, sometimes I, you know, I hang out, uh, you know, at lounges or events and maybe even the club and they're a good alternative to just being bare eyed versus also wearing dark shades. Uh, people compliment me on them a lot. They think they're very stylish. Um, I think the, the tint on them really, uh, uh, people gravitate to the color. Um, the color is, is nice. And so I think it, it gets people's attention. People always ask me, um, how they are. I drive quite a bit. And so I like to wear, they're great driving glasses, um, at daytime and night as well. Um, because here in LA, you know, on the freeways a lot, it's a lot of, um, oncoming traffic with bright lights. And this really cuts that, that like, I mean, tremendously cuts that pressure down from uh, oncoming traffic yeah i love it and the view through the lens is pretty cool as well if i put it up to the screen there there we go mm-hmm. just see the, see the world through a nice little orange orange lens yeah but you would think wearing shades like at night driving would be like a problem but i feel like i, I see very i see very well with them yeah great um, in your work, well, like, just tell me a little bit about what you're doing in your um, professional life at the moment because we've rattled off a few things there that you're an, an actor and, an, and a rapper and a few other things. So what's, what are you working on or working in at the moment? Uh, working on, I'll be in the studio later on this evening um, making some music. I've made it a, um, I made a decision that I will put out an album of music um, by the end of the year. And there's been a lot going on in the world. And so I've had uh, quite a lot of different thoughts and I've been creating a lot of music um, over the last couple of years, but hadn't really found the right time to put it out. But I feel now's the time. Uh, we're promoting our TV pilot that uh, we filmed independently is my writing partner. And I, uh, we've been accepted to several film festivals. Um, many of those film festivals have been pushed. We've premiered in two thus far, but some of the other ones have been pushed to the fall, winter um, now. And we have a, a really uh, talented uh, producer that is behind us as well, um, producing that show um, for us. Uh, Havoc, Havoc Content is doing that work. So those are like two main things. 
I always got some other, you know, things going on here and there, but really making this pilot a TV series and putting out my next um, bit of music and probably a book at some point in time sooner or later. That's where I'm at. May I ask you a nice. question? Please. Um, you're like really motivational person whenever I see you on Instagram. And I mean, you you know, you have this really great product with these sunglasses. What is the driving force behind you? What motivates you? Because I'm interested. Yeah. So what motivates me and what got me into it is slightly different. Um, or And you could also say slightly connected. So um, what got me into running, into producing health and wellness products is I have two businesses. I help people uh, sleep better and work better by wearing these blue light blocking glasses. And then I also help people quit alcohol. Um, those people who want to quit alcohol, quit alcohol. I've been doing that for a number of years. Um, those businesses were really born out of me already being uh, alcohol free and also and already being health and wellness um, conscious. So basically I created businesses out of things that I was already interested in. It wasn't like I was like, all right, I'm going to go and build a business here because I can make money. It was, well, actually I quit drinking in 2010. Lots of people are asking me about how they quit drinking. I'm going to start a business that teaches people how to quit drinking. And then with the glasses, I was in Palm Springs, California with a friend of mine who's a a big health and wellness enthusiast. And he was wearing a really unsightly pair of orange goggles at dinner in Palm Springs. And I said, what are you doing, man? You look ridiculous. And those table of ladies over there are looking at you and they think you look ridiculous as well. And he said, no, man, I'm trying to block the blue light. And then he went on to explain the, you know, the dangers of blue light and how it messes with your eyes. It messes with your productivity during the day. It messes with your melatonin production. So I was like, oh, I'm really into this. And so I wore, wore orange goggles for about 30 days until I realized that I wanted to like, kind of look stylish and cool doing it. And that's how the, the, this business, this whole business of Swanick was created um, because I really wanted to sleep better, perform better, be better, and look kind of cool as I, as I did it. Um, to answer you, the second part of your, your question is what motivates me. Um, uh, it would be, I would be lying or it would be an untruth for me to say that what motivates me first and foremost is helping people. That's not the number one goal. My number one goal is actually to help my family, my partner, my children, my family, myself, and I've chosen to do it by helping people. I'm always, a, uh, uh, sometimes people have asked me, you know, years ago, what, what's your motivation for doing this? And I'm like, oh, I want to help people. And as I've said it, I've like felt pretty incongruent, quite frankly, because I'm realizing that that's not the main motivation. My main motivation is to take care of my offspring and my family and to make sure everyone's cared for. And I choose to do it by helping people. And I think that's the, that's the, that's the key. So that's my motivation. Um, my motivation is to provide for my family. And also I'm, I'm always, always knock on wood and hopefully, and I have that intention that I'll always do that by creating businesses and products that genuine, genuinely care for and help people. That's nice. Got it. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Have you, is there something that's driving you Sheldon and everything that you do? Yes. Um, well, uh, Getting out my talent is always, you know, is important. And that for me is being able to provide for myself and for my family uh, based off of my talent and whatever other skills that I have as an entrepreneur are are rewarding um, in this self. And one of the motivations of wanting to take my talents as far as they can is to be a bit of a beacon or uh, be a beacon to other people to follow suit or to want to, you know, pursue their dreams as well. So that's one of the things that keeps me on target with, you know, pursuing these goals that I'm passionate about is being able to motivate other people. And it's one of the things that really makes me happy is whenever I can go and I can go to schools and talk to kids 
Uh, you know, I can talk to, you know, groups of adults and they seek advice from me. And I'm able to give them advice based on a certain level of success and experience that I've had um, in life. And I think, as always, is, is my success as an athlete or entertainer, it really was always to, I want to be able to do this to be succeed here so I can help other people. You know, like I want to be a basketball player to make a certain amount of money so I can help my family. Or I want to make it out of this little town that I'm from so these other kids that grew up in this town like me can believe that they can go and, you know, succeed um, outside of this environment, uh, you know, that this being in this particular place, you can still go out here and see the world and have, have the world. And so it was always kind of like, I just had this feeling, this inclination as a very young person that I wanted to succeed and be successful so I could help a, like a, a version of a younger me out. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, the, Inter- I, I, grew up, I grew up in the city called Fayetteville, North Carolina, and we just, you know, they, they, at the time, no, nobody had ever gone pro out of there to play basketball. No, there was no famous actors or anything. But I could tell any time somebody came into town, a celebrity of no, we all gravitated to it and all wanted, you know. And so I was like, I want to be that guy to make it out of here and, you know, motivate people to, you know, follow their, their dreams and succeed. Mm. Is there a daily practice that you have that is helping you propel you towards fulfilling your, your potential? What are some of your daily practices or routines to keep you on track? Um, I like to, I have, I have to write something every day. Um, write something every day. I, at this point in time, it's like so automatic that it's not even something that I have to like put on my list. Like I, I will write a song, a poem, a story, something, uh, every day. Um, uh, I need to get up and move, um, to exercise, even if it is a long walk or it's calisthenics or whatever that is, uh, important to me. Uh, I, I need to do that. And I mean, naturally my mind is always kind of working through business ideas and business propositions kind of at all times. And, you know, I had to do something with, you know, my children, you know, every day. Yeah. I write uh, 20 things I'm grateful for every day. I call it the daily 20. And by doing it, it activates my reticular activating system. So when I force myself to write 20 things I'm grateful for each morning, what tends to happen is that throughout the day, I see more evidence that there's things to be grateful for. And so I, I see more of that. And that has uh, certainly helped get me out of moments of sadness or, or I wouldn't say I was, I've ever been depressed, but I've gone through phases where I've felt sadness and, and you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, writing down is sounds powerful. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Again, yeah, I always suggest it to people because I find writing down um, our thoughts and our feelings and different things to be very therapeutic also. Yeah. Uh, have you got some productivity tips you could share with us? Productivity tips. Um, meaning what exactly? Yeah. So if you're going to, if you're going to like, like, for example, you just, it sounded like five minutes ago, you were saying you just decided you were going to release an album this year. So rather than procrastinating and having things take a while or et cetera, maybe you've got something that just says, okay, I'm doing this. That's, that's me. Um, I, I have, there was probably, sometimes things might lag a bit, but I am very determined person and I probably kicked that habit of back a long time ago. You know, I don't like to talk a lot about what I'm going to do. I like to, um, do it. And so that's my thing. If I have an idea, I like to get, put it in process and at first it, I have to work on maybe the calmness in this because I'm not that type of person. So it frustrates me when other people are talking about what they want to do or do this or do that, you know, and there's a lot of talking going on. And I'm like, well, what are you doing to get it done? Like, or whenever people come to me for advice, I'm like, okay, cool. 
let's put a plan in motion. Let's go. I'm just kind of like, don't even come to me with the idea and the plan if you're not serious and you're not really trying to do it. It just frustrates me because I'm ready. I'm ready for it all. So um, I see a lot of, I see tremendous potential in everybody, um, probably more so than they see in themselves. And, you know, I, I'm here. I'm like, let's get it done. You know, when some of these things might take a little bit of time to develop, uh, but hey, anything worth it or you feel passionate about is worth doing it. But I find a lot of people are, they say they're not content, but they are content in their lack of motivation and movement towards establishing a goal and going to achieve it. And um, I'm here to help motivate people and to continue to motivate myself to achieve all the great things that we can achieve um, in life. Uh, so I want people to really believe, number one, and then be willing to go and work for it. Sheldon Bailey, thank you so much for that. I appreciate uh, you joining us here on Swanick Live. Congratulations on your uh, creative success so far and long may it continue. Thank you for being a proud wearer of the Swanee's blue light blocking glasses. You definitely win the He Wore It Better award. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you Um, so much. Yeah, and thanks for helping children and, you know, being a great mentor for people as well. So, um, yeah, thanks for your time, sir. No problem. Um, I will continue to enjoy uh, my swan with glasses. Um, Hello, Elena out there. She's the person that uh, has been hooking some things up for me. And uh, I I wish you all nothing but uh, success and great motivation over there at, at Swan with 